like to call up the top five in the current Lifetime Grand Prix presented by Mazda Standings. And your current leader of the Lifetime Grand Prix presented by Mazda, Mr. Keegan Swenson. We're going to have an action-packed day today, Janelle. We're uh, back in Bentonville, third, third year in a row for Big Sugar Gravel, uh, presented by Mazda. Excited to be back here. Uh, 104 miles for the for the longer distance, and then the shorter distance, they're going to be doing about 50 miles today. Over 1,400 people will be on the start line today. We have our elite men off first, followed by the elite women, five minutes behind, and then the mass start. Uh, so athletes are definitely prepared for a little bit of dust, a little bit of heat today. So this is the seventh and final stop in the Lifetime Grand Prix. You know, Janelle, in the Grand Prix, uh, we all know Keegan and Sophia have uh, have the overalls locked up, but it is a tight race for second on down. We're about two minutes to the start. We're, uh, we're getting a good shot here looking down. Three, two, one, and we are underway. Bentonville make the line. It's going to be a barn burner of a race. Conditions have been dry for a number of days here. Got some great chunky gravel out there awaiting these riders. Neutral start, they're gonna roll out about five, six miles. They'll hit that gravel. And if it's anything like last year, it was game on. I heard, you know, that first stretch, which is flat, straight, fast. They were they were upwards of 30 miles an hour on that gravel last year when they hit it. It's gonna be a fast, fast start to the uh, 2023 Lifetime Big Sugar Gravel presented by Mazda. All right, we've got our women all queued up. We are now coming up on 10 seconds till the start. We'll give you a countdown, but Bentonville, you're gonna make a little noise for our professional women in five, four, three, two, one. Bentonville, make some noise. We are underway with our professional women's series final here. Fierce competition on the line today, including the current World champion, Kasha Niwadoma, uh, not in the Grand Prix, but will most definitely be an animator today. Uh, we also have the leader in the Lifetime Grand Prix, Sophia Gomez at Visha Fanier. So, 104 miles today, about 6,200 feet of climbing, and there are no gigantic long climbs on this course, Chemo, but I've been told numerous times that it is death by a thousand cuts in the Ozarks. It's definitely chunkier. It's, a, it's definitely going to be more challenging than it was last year. Separate start for the women. And uh, we'll get to see some true women's racing. Sophia gomez Vichafanye, she's in the red jersey, white helmet, just off the shoulder of Hannah Otto. This is a stacked field. All right, we are not done yet. We've got lots of racing yet to kick off. All age groups starting together, one big mass of riders tackling the same 100 mile course as our professional men and women. So Janelle, we just had about 1400 riders start the, uh, the, the Lifetime Big Sugar Classic presented by Mazda. Uh, the age groupers are off. Uh, this is gonna be an exciting race, you know, they're there's going to be some fast ones on the front that are going to want to chase down some of the elites that are that got off 10, you know, 10, 15 minutes earlier. But this is, you know, this is where this is the life of the party, right? This is uh, this is what we're all out here for. One of my favorite things ahead of the race is to spend some time in the expo, and everyone's excited to be a part of the community. We're at the 2023 Big Sugar Classic right here in downtown Bentonville at the Expo for our gravel event coming up this weekend. Big Sugar Gravel was founded by the Lifetime team proudly in 2019. And now we are hosting Big Sugar Classic, which is the evolution of Big Sugar Gravel. We have lots of community happenings around town. 
This year we added Little Sugar Mountain Bike Race, which is a true single track mountain bike race in the mountain bike capital of the world. It features a 20K, a 50K, and a 100K. And for those elites, they had a $65,000 prize purse they were vying for. The team did so much homework to ensure that we were providing the best, safest experience, and it was just good vibes. If you look at all of the little pieces that go into us just putting this event on for one weekend, it's a microcosm of like how this community exists on a day-to-day. -day. There's just so much pride in this becoming a place to welcome people from everywhere. We're about 12 miles into Big Sugar and we're with the pro men. You can see Cole Patton near the front, Lachlan Morton. The big thing on Cole Patton's mind today is a hard race. Uh, he does not want this to go easy at any point. He doesn't want people sitting in. He wants this to break up early and there will be opportunities on this course for things to break up early. Yeah, we heard Cole was going to try and uh, push the pace for sure. He was, uh, he, he feels like he's got something to prove on gravel coming into this. He's had some solid, solid results and we all know he's a, he's a solid mountain biker. Um, he just, you know, he crushed it last weekend at the Little Sugar MTB, but he is, uh, I think he's, he's got something to show these guys. He wants to show them that he can make it happen on gravel as well. Kind of fun seeing Keegan. I think it looks like he might be in his Stars and Stripes jersey. He just won the Gravel National Championships. And I think he was, what, fifth at, uh, at Gravel Worlds a couple weeks ago. Just caught eyes on Brendan Johnston, who got his first podium in the Lifetime Grand Prix at the RAD, riding for Giant. I also caught eyes on John Borstelman, who was leading the race last year and then flatted, and, uh, and as a result wasn't able to contest with that top group. Janelle, another little dynamic we heard about this week. Tobin Ordenblad on the hit squad with uh, Keegan Swenson. He has done um, done a little bit of work for Keegan this year. With Keegan having the race locked up, or the series locked up at the Grand Prix, you know, it, it could be a little bit of payback time for uh, Tobin. So we're hearing maybe Keegan's going to be out there. You know, he, he can't lose the series this year. He's across the start line, so he's won the overall in the Grand Prix, uh, even if he doesn't finish. So, But Tobin... He's one of those guys that did a lot of work for Keegan at a number of races, and um, and he's fighting for a position to get back into the Grand Prix this next year. So, wouldn't be shocked to see Tobin sitting on Keegan's wheel a little bit today. Other riders that we're seeing here that are close to that top 15, I just caught sight of Braden Lang riding for Scott. You can see Andrew Lesbroms and Brandon Johnston moving up on the right-hand side. Matt Beers and Russell Finsterwald, they're side by side. Matt Beers has had a phenomenal few weeks, 25th at the World Championships and second place last week in Little Sugar MTB, a sprint finish with Key and Swenson. So Kimo, we have former professional Lauren Hall down in with the men's race. Uh, Lauren, if you can hear us, how are things feeling at the front of the race so far? It's been a beautiful start to this race. And these, this road right now is so dusty, so loose, so much gravel. It has just been full gas. These guys are in full race mode right now. It is so exciting. We do have someone off the front here. I don't know if you guys can pick up who that is, but uh, looks like that could be John Borstelman maybe has taken off off the front. So Janelle, it looks like uh, John Borstelman's taking a little bit of a flyer here. I think he's put about a a 10 to 15 second gap on the field. He's uh, trying to trying to break away. He's got some pavement right now, so could be a good time for him to put a little gap on the field and see if he can't uh, put a stamp on this race. Last year in the 2022 edition, John was off the front of that lead group of riders that had Keegan, Russell Finsterwald, Alexi Vermeulen, and he platted on a descent going into the second checkpoint. It wasn't able to fill up that uh, tire fast enough maybe 15 second gap they can see him as they're on this straight gravel road yeah, i think this early in the race they're going to probably keep it tight they're not going to want to let they're not going to want to see him go away looks like they've pulled back in borstelman could that be cole Patton? maybe sitting on his wheel still sitting right up there on the front so he's he's definitely racing aggressive today We've got a rider down in that turn. This was that downhill turn, and then you see riders going off into driveways to avoid the mayhem, but looked like we were right back up and rolling. 
So after rounding that technical turn, we've had a little split in our peloton. We've got Cole Patton, Keegan Swenson up there front, right behind Keegan, Tobin Ortenblad. Another guy that's, you know, that just kind of quietly had a really good year, three-time Leadville champion, uh, Howard Grotz. He's sitting back there about 15. He Ooh. looks really comfortable. Ooh, right oh, right Oh, we just had a, we just had a pile up there. The four like riders Matt. who went down. Looks like Matt Beers is down. Matt Beers and the Toyota kit, uh, Kimo, uh, you, these are all phenomenally talented riders, but you, you saw that that crash happened right in the middle on the right-hand side. A rider lost the front wheel, uh, and then this is where separations happen. So you know, that's where gravel is a lot like road racing. You have to stay on the front. You want to be safe, you have to stay on the front. Unfortunately, Matt Beers got caught up in that crash. Let's hope to see... Uh, Let's hope we see him get back on and, and bridge back up to this lead group because he's he's really had uh, he's closing out the season strong. So Janelle, you know, coming into this race in the in the women's field, um, Sophia Gofez Vishafani, as we all know, has it locked up. Alexis Scarda probably looking and hungry for her first win in the Grand Prix this year. Yeah, I think Alexis is gunning for this race. She's She has been kind of, you know, second and third step on the podium multiple times this year. She's having a phenomenal year. I'm Alexis Scarda. I'm from Grand Junction, Colorado. I think this series is still so new that we're trying to be an all-around athlete at this point with the gravel and the mountain biking and being good at a four-hour race and a 12-hour race. And so our skill levels, I think, are across the board in so many different things. I changed up my training a little bit based off of last year by adding in more mileage and big rides. I realized doing Unbound that I needed to put in a little bit more mileage. I think it's important just to get your body used to a lot of miles on the bike. But you know, they all must have a, a mark on Kasha's back. She just won Gravel World, the Gravel World Championships two weeks ago. I think I heard she just got her rainbow jersey yesterday. And so she's first time racing in her rainbow jersey and we're honored to have her out here racing with us this year. Just got an update from Leah Davison who is on the front of the women's group doing coverage for us. Okay, so we've hit a rare section of pavement here. Uh, at mile 20.5 at Big Sugar, and I see Kaja Noadama and Sofia Gomez Vijafane have separated themselves from this lead group of eight. They're going over a timing mat right now, so we will see exactly who's in this group, but there's about a 15 second gap between them and this lead group, and they are working together. So both taking poles, training poles, because they want to make this move stick. So here we go. It's all happening here at Big Sugar. Kimo, I am not surprised to see the race going hard and to see Sophia with Kasia. Uh, Sophia's race is primarily in the US, probably has something a little bit to prove against the Euro talent, talent Kasia Nuadoma. Our chase group of women is about six, seven riders. Paige Onweller, Alexis Scarda. Jenna Reinhardt is in there. Uh, you know, Paige, after coming out here and winning uh, the 2022 Lifetime Big Sugar uh, Gravel, she uh, she actually moved here. So she spent the most of the summer on the road in a van uh, and just a couple weeks ago moved to uh, make Bentonville her home. And, you know, she came into this, you know, into this series last year, really unknown. You know, she has admitted she, she didn't really know anybody herself. And, uh, if anything, she has become now a fan favorite. I think also we're hearing a favorite amongst the other riders. She's just a, she's a wonderful person to be around. She's super happy to be doing this for a living. And uh, it's great to see Paige getting, you know, up there in the front, uh, helping to uh, change the dynamic of the race. I'm a rider in that group right now. I'm gonna be watching for who is riding a bit more at ease on these climbs. And right now it's Kasia and Sophia. This course really good. It's beautiful and that it rolls through, you know, through the hills. We break out into big kind of open farm fields for, for periods of time and the gravel tends to be a little bit better maintained, a little smoother. But in the down in these little valleys and hollows, they uh, they really are going to encounter some pretty chunky stuff. You got to ride smart. You got to protect your tires. Final showdown. Big Sugar Gravel in Bentonville, Arkansas. 100 miles of tire shredding. Just absolute mayhem. This is one of the best gravel races, if not the best gravel race course in the country. 
The crazy thing about this course is that you could be going from relatively smooth gravel and then all of a sudden be bombing down one of these super steep hills that just has this insane chunk in the line that you want to be taking. You got to be on your toes from start to finish. Sorry, it's been super dry out, so we haven't had any rain and we're not, we don't have any rain in the forecast, then it's gonna be dusty as hell out there. Despite this being one of the tougher races out there, the, the average speeds are still gonna be high. On paper, these aren't huge climbs. They're not massive, but they just wear you down over and over again. It may not look crazy on a map, but everything about it is just tougher. No, we were uh, back up to the uh, lead men. It looks like John Borselman is still off the lead. He's been dropping the hammer all day. He's been on and off the front, and uh, looks like he's got about a 10 second gap right now. And we've got a chase of about 10, 12 guys. You see Lachlan Morton's bright pink. We know he's in there. Finsty was hanging around the back of that group. We did get an update that Tobin, Ortblad, and Lawrence Tindam were dropped from this group a few minutes ago. Uh, Keegan's been doing a little bit of work at the front to try and chase Borstelman back. Borstelman has had company in, from Jonas Orset, uh, the Norwegian rider. So we got Lachlan Morton pulling through, uh, taking over some work, and right on his wheel we got Brendan Johnston. So that's Lachlan, Cole, and Brendan Johnston on the front of the chase group. Today's course has two checkpoints and two water oases. So we're almost at the 58 mile mark where we have the Shammy Butter Water Oasis. Kima, I don't know that we're gonna see these guys stopping for, for a, you know, a nice rest at the oasis. I still see Payson just barely dangling on the back of this group. Looks like he is working hard to stay connected here. After the mishap, the multiple stops for a flat tire at the rad it'd be nice to see him have a, a clean run at this finish yeah i think we you know we talked about pacing coming into the event 16th overall in the grand prix we announced we were going to take the top 15 and uh he wants to continue to be a part of this so he's he might be uh he might be just conserving holding his cards Russell Finsterwald won this race last year and came into it in a similar situation, sitting in fourth place just off of the top three podium, and he's contesting it with the same rider from last year, Cole Patton. Uh, Cole has a three-point lead on Russell in the Grand Prix. Uh, we've seen Cole animating the race all day. Russell potentially happy to let the race be hard, but not have to contribute to making it hard. John Borstelman has been off the front a lot today. The group has made contact. Uh, hopefully he decides to take just, just a little breather before he probably attacks again. We have another attack from John Borstelman. Yeah, I don't think he sat in for 30 seconds and uh, he went and attacked again. John's, uh, you know, he's such a strong rider. He just not has had a good result this year. Kind of across the series, he's been pretty consistently in the 20, you know, in the top, you know, 25, which, you know, it gets you points, but it doesn't get you the good points. So he needs to put up a result. There's, there's 13 guys in the chase group right now. So if he can stay, you know, ahead of these guys or with them, he'll post up a better result. He's got a pretty good chance to move up in the, in the overall standings as we finish out the series. Lachlan has actually broken away. He is now... About 103, 104 down on John Borstelman, and uh, he's chasing solo right now. He's dropped 12 other riders trying to make the bridge across. Those 12 riders, about 20 seconds down on Lachlan. Lachlan does not have to fear being solo at all because actually he spent most of his time racing solo. Since he left the Pro Tour, uh, racing full-time in Europe, uh, he's been doing races that not just span a day or hours, but span days uh, racing the Trans Rockies this summer. For starters, I mean, it's, it's really incredible uh, what Lachlan has been able to do, you know, the diversity of events that Lachlan is able to pull off. So Janelle, as we said, about 20 seconds back to the chase group uh, behind Lachlan. They're coming up a steep hill here, and once again we see Keegan Swenson go to the front and, uh, and drive in the pace. Uh, right on his, his wheel, Brendan Johnston. Keegan Swenson setting pace and pulling Lachlan back. Cole Patton still sitting in there. I just got a word that uh, Alex Howes, unfortunately, he wasn't this lead group, just flatted out. So chase group of six have made contact. 
Brandon Johnson just sitting up there. Really exciting to see Brendan have another strong race. You know, he had that first podium in the Grand Prix at the RAD at the end of September. Sometimes that's all you need, Chemo, in order to be able to kind of get yourself out of a out of a rut or to have a breakthrough. And it seems like the RAD was a breakthrough result for Brendan Johnston. I'm Brendan Johnston from Canberra, Australia, 31 years old and um, taking on the Lifetime Grand Prix this year. Following along with the Grand Prix last year, I just got more and more kind of excited about the prospect of, of coming and doing it myself. It was kind of a missing piece to my career, and my theory was this year, if I didn't get in, I'd probably come and do Unbound and Leadville and, and pick some races anyway. I want every chance to put my name inside that top five, top ten part of the series. Yeah, I'm all in when it, when it comes to the racing. So Janelle, we're you know in the front of this chase group. It's great to see another Aussie that's racing in the Grand Prix this year, Tasman or Canvas. He hasn't had a great year. Needs some points to move up to lock himself in for a 2024 place. So we're at about mile 50, Janelle, and uh, you know we're having a hard time staying in contact with the lead women. They're in some pretty dense, dense coverage. Leah, can you give us an idea of what's happening down there with the lead, lead women in the race? We are at mile. 40 of the Big Sugar Classic, and here's the status. Kaja Nuadova has attacked, and she has gone solo off the front. So our Gravel World champ wants to go solo, has no help whatsoever with over half of this race to go. That's a long way to not have any draft, any recovery, uh, but obviously she's strong enough. She has won Gravel World Championships just a couple weeks ago, and she is world a world-class rider. We now have a chase group. Anna Hicks, Sarah Sturm, Jenna Reinhardt, Whitney Allison, Paige Onweller, and Alexis Scarter. So a couple, a couple of non-lifetime Grand Prix athletes in there, obviously Gravel World Champ Kaja, and also Whitney Allison, not a lifetime Grand Prix athlete. Most notably not up there is Sofia gomez Vigifane. She has pulled the plug at about, I don't know, mile 45 and said, oh, I'm done racing, which what a bummer because at the beginning of this race, she looked so strong. I was so surprised and, and actually disappointed and bummed to see her uh, just decide not to race. So nothing has happened to Sofia. She just said, that's it for me, I'm over it. Mile 57, Big Sugar Classic, here's the update. We have a chase group that formed together, Lauren Crescento and Sarah Lane actually caught up to this chase group. So that made it a chase group of eight. Pretty significant pavement climb and then a technical descent. And our chase group has splintered just a little bit. So there were four trailing up front if these ladies can get together and really start to push the pace and work together they could potentially catch our leader Kaja Nuadoma. Interestingly Ellie Campbell her day was looking really good at the beginning I was psyched to see her at the front of the group really being aggressive I mean that's a new Ellen Campbell that we've seen this year. I'm Ellen Campbell I'm from Durango Colorado up until this year, I had always picked goals that were controllable. I'm more motivated by what outcomes other than winning. I wanna be comfortable and confident in gravel races, especially the start. That's like the scariest thing for me is the start of a gravel race. I would love to be in the top 10 of the Grand Prix. I mean, there's always the win, like that's super motivating, but it's also, you know, that's not what's gonna drive me every single day. Okay, big problem for Jenna Reinhardt. She's pulling over. It looks like it's a problem with her rear wheel. So I'm guessing a flat, maybe maybe something with her rear derailleur. She's looking at it, she's trying to figure out. So big bummer for Jenna Reinhardt right now. That's gonna make a big impact on her late in the game in this race. She's gonna have to burn a ton of matches to catch back up to that chase break. Jenna Reinhardt just absolutely hammering, crushing the climbs, 
taking risks on the descent just to try to catch back up to that group. This this could be the end of her race today. Okay, our leader is at currently at mile 68, and the chase group is at mile 65.3. So that is the difference between the leader and the chase group. And most importantly, Lorne Crescento has broken off this chase group and is now only 90 seconds back. This race is almost coming back together as the miles tick away and we get closer to the finish line. Paige Onweller and Whitney Allison looking really strong right now in this climb. Sarah Sturm starting to get gapped off a little bit on this climb. So she's been yo-yoing just ever so slightly. Really anything can happen. It's hot too. It's about 70, I would say 70 degrees. So not a cool race. Hydration, fueling, really important. And you can, when you're in the thick of this drama and you're on the chase, you're working hard, you can forget to eat and drink and then you can explode as it comes down to the final miles of this race. So we'll see what happens. And also our leader, Kaja, she has to continue to have good luck. I mean, no flats, no mechanicals. There's still a lot left of racing, about 40 miles. And it's rough, it's rocky. There's been crashes. There have been flat tires. There's everything happening, rock turns. So a lot of drama is still to unfold. Kimo, we're with our lead group of men just 10, 12, 13 miles out from the finish, and uh, it's Howard Gratz on the front. We've got a pretty strong group here, including Keegan Swenson, riding currently uh, second wheel from the back. On the back, Brendan Johnston. We've got Torbjorn Reed uh, sitting right in front of Keegan Swenson. He won BWR Kansas last week. Uh, hails currently from Grand Junction, Colorado. Strong group here, John Borstelman, Still hanging in this group as well. Cole yeah. Patton pulling through, followed by Howard Gratz. Cole's had a strong day today from, uh, you know, from everything that we've seen. He's been pushing the pace. He's been making all the moves. Uh, uh, this is a, still a fantastic day for him. He had a really rough time at the Rad, one of his, uh, the few bad days that he's had this year. These six guys here working together, taking turns. Uh, Brenda Johnston seems to just be sitting on the back. Now it looks like Keegan decided just to sit up, said, if you're not going to work, I'm not going to work. So he's kind of hanging out there on the back, just the two of them. But Brenda Johnston seems content to let the other guys work. Looks oh. like looks like Keegan uh, just stood up, doing a little bit, of, maybe stretching his back. He looks pretty darn comfortable back there. We may, uh, may see this come, back to a, come down to another sprint. The course isn't going to be the thing to decide it. It's going to be tactics. Uh, riding really heads up and not missing a, a move when someone decides to go. You think about the Lifetime Grand Prix, it might be more interesting the riders that are not here right now. You know, we saw Lachlan earlier in the day really trying to animate the race like he has all year. He has been the guy that's been attacking. He's been trying to change up the dynamic, but he's now off the back. We saw Pete Stedna, you know, dropped early. We think probably had a mechanical. So that's number six in the Grand Prix right now. Russell Finsterwald, haven't seen him in this group. He is uh, fourth overall in the Grand Prix. Uh, Lexi Vermeule in second. He's been out of this group for a while. We hear that he might be chasing back with, uh, could be chasing back with uh, Lachlan, uh, but a lot of the top 10 in the Grand Prix not in this lead group. So some of these guys are got some opportunity. Brendan Johnston, he stays up here in this lead group. He's got a, a really good chance of moving up in the Grand Prix, making a few more bucks than he thought he was at the beginning of the day. Brendan Johnston taking that pull. Keegan Swenson as well. Keegan looks really comfortable, Kimo. Uh, my name is Keegan Swenson. I am from originally from Park City, Utah. Keegan Swenson, get up! I mean, I definitely learned a lot last year. That was like me first time racing Unbound, first time doing some of these other gravel races and kind of how these events play out in terms of like who's good at what. And now you kind of know the competition, you know, we've raced almost all of them. There's a few new guys here. Gravel in the U.S. is a different beast. Like it's kind of its own thing. It's like the wild west of bike racing, right? So it's, it's just different and new. So I think it'll be exciting to see kind of how it shakes out. He looks really relaxed. And you know, this is the... You know, one of the beauties of gravel racing is, you know, 
we have a couple thousand participants out here this week and we're catching the 50 milers right now you know we've got lead motos and vehicles kind of going through cl trying to clear the way but this can play a factor in the end of the race where you've got it you've got a lot of riders out here they've got to work their way through get a clean line i've just got eyes on uh, alex house lachlan martin and alexi all three boulder guys chasing and right now it's looking like they are maybe 20 seconds back so they may they may get back up to this group. Wow, Kimo, this really changes things. You know, we were talking about how Alexi has been absent from the front of the race all day long. This is this is incredibly stunning riding. For Alexi to be coming back with less than 10 miles of racing, this is a stunning, stunning showing from Alexi Vermeulen. My name is Alexi Vermeulen. Last year for me, the Grand Prix was eye-opening. It, it had this sense of community, it had this validation being race to race, and at the end of the season, I found some success. Please welcome Alexi Vermeulen. That's what makes this, this series special, is it has to invoke that feeling inside of you, that fight or flight, are you gonna push or are you gonna hold back? And it's something that I'm always curious to find inside myself, right? You, you can think something right now, sitting in a dark room, but when you get out on the start line in the sun at 9 a.m., things change. For Alex to get dropped, for Alexi to get dropped, Lachlan to get dropped, and then to see seven guys here kind of sitting up and playing games with each other, they're going to let these guys back into the race. I mean, you can just see the pace is uh, so much higher right now for Lachlan and uh, Alex and Alexi. They are really working to bridge back up. They are down to, it looks like, about five seconds here. The seven lead guys just... They seem to have lost interest in trying to keep, you know, keep the pace up. Alexi's got pop in his sprint. Keegan's got pop in his sprint. So it's definitely, we're down to, we've now got a lead group of 10 guys, Janelle. Let's watch what happens when they make contact. Someone go for the surprise move, please. Nah, they're just sitting on chemo. Now, what's the best tactic from here? You know, this the dynamic of this race is, you know, you've got that A A Street climb. That'll play a factor in this finish for sure. It's a it's a climb that's enough, it's punchy enough to uh, to really hurt the legs at mile hundred and three in a race like this. So don't be shocked to see uh, some action happen when they get to the bottom of that climb. Watching Keegan's stance on the bike, he just looks so comfortable, so smooth. Brendan Johnson there sitting in second wheel. This is this is a fantastic gravel racing. Howard Graz, he's doing the bulk of the work right now. You know, Howie may be one of the guys motivated to uh, to keep the pace up because, he, you know, guys ahead of him in the Grand Prix, Matt Beers is out, Zach called Pete Stetna. So a bunch of the guys that are ahead of him in the Grand Prix, you know, Howard, Howie's probably motivated. Stay on the front, keep the pace high. Don't let any of those guys bridge back. He's thinking points right now, moving up into the top 10, which is the money, as you know, in the Grand Prix. We're going to give away $250,000 tonight, 25000 for first, all the way down to 6000 for 10th. So that pays the bills, you know, and these guys, they're motivated by that money as well, and they want to get in the top 10 to finish out the year. Kimo, we've hit the pavement. They are smooth sailing on this. A uh, lot less likely to get a flat tire at this point in the race. Five miles out, uh, pavement all the way in. Well, Howard Grotz, where did he just go? He is putting the hammer down. And we see Lachlan Morton and Torbjorn are closing that gap. Lachlan going, Lachlan going right on by. Torbjorn on his wheel. Keegan now going and closing the gap. He's such a consummate competitor, he just couldn't let him go. Brandon Johnston sitting ninth wheel behind Alexi Vermeulen. Lachlan going through that turn in first wheel. Everybody staying together, no one making a move quite yet. Ten riders coming into the finish of the 2023 Big Sugar Gravel presented by Mazda. Oh. Looks like we got Torborn Reed going off the front here or trying to attack on this little descent. He went to the front, gave it a little punch, now he's in an arrow tuck. Keegan Swenson right on his wheel, Tasman covering the gap there. We're down, we've actually split the group here. We're down to six guys, so we lost four guys on that hill. We've lost uh, Lachlan and we've lost Alex. Uh, Cole Patton's dangling off the back of this group. They're motoring. It's a pretty fast descent. Down to a lead group of six riders. We'll see if anyone's coming back. It looks like Keegan Swenson sitting second wheel. Tasman and Carabas sitting in third wheel. And Brendan Johnston going to the front. Taking Alexi with him. They're going to get on that bike path right there that you see. They've dropped in Tasman. And they're, now they're over the top of the hill. Cole's on the front. Keegan's on his wheel. Alexi Vermeulen. Alexi's still there. 
super comfortable. This is a really good situation yep. for Alexi. Brendan Johnston is still there, and it looks like Torbarn is still there. Paul Patton putting it into a big gear coming over the top of this. Keegan sitting right behind him. Stop, a stop. sprint group of five riders we're looking at at this point. Paul's getting aggressive. Torbjorn just went to the outside of that turn. There goes for Alexi. Alexi's going, taking off. We're looking at a sprint finish. Keegan Swenson sitting second wheel. Brendan Johnston right on him. Alexi just coming across that gap. And there goes Brendan Johnston opening up his sprint with for this wheel. with Torbjorn. From, he just won a race last week in Torbjorn getting the slight advantage and takes the win here in Bentonville, Arkansas. Second place to Brandon Johnston. Thrilling <laughs> finish for that final group. <laughs> what a big effort from all of these riders. Huge win from Torbjorn Reed. Brendan Johnston is so wonderful to be able to celebrate another podium with your family. Oh my goodness, Kimo, they have absolutely nothing left. What a huge win for Torbjorn. So Janelle, I want to do a little shout out. You know, this community has just welcomed us with open arms here. They've been, just been fantastic. We're in the center of the mountain bike universe, Bentonville, Arkansas. Bentonville has created this community and these trails and everything is centered around the bike. This community is not just cycling focused. They've had a vision that they've been striving for in terms of creating a place that people want to be. And there's been huge investment in trail development for all types of mountain bikers. The trail systems are building, what the trailblazers are doing is like nothing I've ever seen anywhere in the country. I mean, you pick an intersection, you might see commuters, might see mountain bikers, people carrying their kids to school, and you'll see people out for a road or gravel just heading out of town. Our mission really is to make Bentonville the absolute best version of itself that it possibly can be. So we're looking at our main chase group right behind Lauren DiCrescenzo which is who is behind Cascinio Adoma so we're looking at Alexis Scarda Paige Onweller last year's winner is in there Jenna Reinhardt is also in this group a group of five women um, Anna Hicks I believe has also made this group uh, comes to gravel from more of a road racing background and Whitney Allison also making this group so these five women are likely fighting for the third spot on today's podium so we've got Janelle, we've got Lauren DiCrescenzo here. She is chasing, we're getting a time split of, a, of over two minutes back on Kasha. Um, you know, Lauren has come on strong at the back half of the year. Um, she's, you know, admitted not to be a great mountain biker. She wants to become a better mountain biker. Um, she's had a great year this year. She's definitely done better in the gravel events than the mountain bike events. She actually came out and won the rad a couple weeks ago, had a phenomenal race. She needed a good result to kind of move her way up in the standings in the Grand Prix. She's done a pretty good job, you have to admit, for not being a mountain biker. Um, she's, she's having a great year, sitting here in fifth coming into today. And, you know, she's ahead of uh, Alexis Scarda, Haley Smith, Sarah Sturm. So she's got, uh, she's potentially moving up in the rankings here today. Kimo, we are with our solo leader, and she's been that way for the majority of the day. Kasia Niwidoma, the world champion of gravel. And she was off the front solo for at least the last 40 miles. Before that, she was paired up with Sophia and uh, not slowing down anytime soon. I'm certainly seeing uh, Kasia put on a show here today. There's no chance she's going to let Lauren DiCrescenzo get back on her wheel. Kasia Nyuadoma, a world champion, just making amazing, powerful work of the final miles here in Bentonville. Yeah, she's putting down the hammer here on this last climb. It's this gradual climb that we saw with the guys a little earlier, and it's pretty steady. And then she'll be uh, on the home stretch. You know, another thing that's incredibly impressive about the way that Kasha and the rest of the women's field race today, they had a separate start from the men. You know, this is a completely women-powered 
race finish here. This is stunning display of the strength of the female peloton. Passion Muadelma coming in on the final meters at the Big Sugar Gravel presented by Mazda. Wrapping up Big Sugar Classic, both arms in the air, pumping the sky. Cassia Nuitoma, your 2023 Big Sugar Gravel champion. Here at the Lifetime Big Sugar Classic presented by Mazda, we're so we're just so impressed and uh, honored to have the world world champions here racing with us this week at the Big Sugar Classic. The fight for third is on. We're looking at Anna Hicks. Looking over her shoulder to see who's behind, what kind of gap she has. I think we've got Paige Onweller trying to get up to Anna Hicks, who's not part of the Grand Prix, but Paige certainly is. And right on her tail, trying to come back. Whitney Allison. Whitney Allison, strong rider out of Fort Collins. Anna Hicks taking that right-hand turn. Two riders coming from behind. Whitney Allison taking that turn right in front of Paige Onweller. This race could still come together for these three women. Yeah, they're out of the trees here, and they're, um, looks like Anna Hicks still has a little bit of a gap, probably three, four seconds on uh, on Whitney Allison and Paige Onweller. So they're trying to cover that gap. They're on the steepest part of a road climb. Anna Hicks looks like she stood up, took a little bit of dig. She looks like she's put about five or six, maybe seven seconds here on uh, on on Paige and uh, Whitney Allison. We know that Katya and Lauren have crossed the line, and looks like Anna's going to be going to come in third. Her biggest result so far age on weller coming across the line fourth place, fourth place second place in the grand prix chemo fantastic racing here in northwest arkansas we saw a dynamic race in both the men's and the women's fields a lot to celebrate the seventh and final race in the lifetime grand prix it's got to feel good not just for these racers but for everyone on the ground crossing the finish line at bentville today Ladies and gentlemen, your overall big sugar podium is Dean Grisenzo and New Adoma. Ladies and gentlemen, your overall podium, this is for Lauren and Johnson and Reed. So amazing to see a crowd like this show up. So amazing to see the phenomenal athletes that we've got. We just want to continue to grow the sport of cycling, not only for the elites and the pros, but for all of you that have come and just raced this event, this other, other events of ours around the country. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting us.